search part removed. You know, I, I had a conversation with somebody in the State Department about three days ago, and I asked them about it, you know, because I'm just some old dumb country boy from Tennessee, and I got news for them. I'm not from the country. Um, <laughs> but I, I asked, I said, what about this warrant thing? And they said, well, Congressman, that's very problematic. And I thought to myself, you know, State Department, you have a you're prob you're problematic to the Constitution, the Bill of Rights of this dadgum country. Yep. And um, you know the arrogance of this bunch, a bunch of unelected. That's the mistake Trump made. He should have gone through that place like Grant through Richmond, I clean agree. the house. I agree. Fire their asses. Make them uh, prove the why we have a State Department. It's basically right now it's for exporting. Um, drag shows to central america and, <laughs> and, and doing things like that they ought to be exporting things like oh i don't know capitalism patriotism um values that that we'd be proud of um you know and it's just out of control brother i don't know how i'm going to vote even if they put the amendment on because they still exempted congress from the thing yet how can you do that it's it, and, and then nobody's even in the media is like, oh, we're okay with it. I got news for him. He gets some, uh, you know, anarchist in his president. We've got one now. He just can't find the soft, soft serve ice cream machine. <laughs> and, you know, he's, he's going to turn on the media. He'll turn on the media and he'll start using these things to get at you. Because here's how easily it works. FISA was created to uh, um, go after foreign act foreigners in other countries or, and then well they they're in this country so you've got a foreigner who um you know say they want to get at you because you're a well-known member of the media and you've got a you've got a contractor working on your roof you know hey i gotta fix these shingles so what are they going to do they might bring in somebody that's not from this country maybe from overseas it's it's going to be working up there and then they call you on the phone and say, hey, I got to get some more shingles. Well, guess what? They're a foreigner. They got your phone number. They're going after you, an American citizen. And that's how easy. I mean, if they could go after Trump with this thing, they could go after anybody. Well, and that's, so, the, that's the biggest thing to me. They, they use this to spy on a presidential campaign. Well, they used it to spy on Americans at least 278,000 times in 2021. Brother, that's more than one a day. Do the math. I forget what the math is on that. It's pretty, it's, it's a whole lot every day. But it's, um, it, it's like, a, uh, anyway, I don't do math on the radio. Our audience appreciates the, the no math on the radio. It's a, we have a strict but, rule. So where does it stand right now? What are we looking at? Okay, they're debating it right now. We allowed the rules, so that's a procedural move, and we uh, we stopped it before with the rule because uh, we wanted to, these amendments because our our leadership, well, the Uniparty, was not allowing any debate, any amendments. So we just said, all right, fine, we'll just kill it right here, and that that was the procedure put in place there, and we um, and now they're debating it, and we will uh, vote on these amendments that will make it better. But I, you know, you're putting you're putting a bow tie on a pig. Um, I like my ribs, but I don't like them sitting on the floor of Congress. Um, so, um, but that that that's where we're at. It, hopefully, we'll vote on something today, and we'll we'll know where we're at. So, explain to me how they were going to make Congress exempt from this. Well, they have. They've uh, Congress, and so say they're um, they're going after you. Um, they'd have to get a warrant. I mean, they, they would if they, they use this to get at an American by going to a foreigner. I explained that earlier. Probably not too good. They just go after a foreigner and you have a contact with them. You're yep. an American citizen. Then they can go after you because you fell within the veil of that or the net, I guess I should say. And they can make what's called a query, which is just a fancy word for, for doing research on you. Well, they did this 278,000 times against Americans in 2021. And so they've exempted Congress from that. So if they're going to look at Congress, if they're going to look at you as an American citizen, they don't need a warrant. But if they're going to look at Congress, they'd have to get a warrant, a member of Congress. So, you know, if, if there's any corruption in this world, it's happening in Congress and the United States Senate. And the thing that they're going to have to call you before they give you, you a, you know, a, um, 
a, a search warrant to me is a little it, that is that, that that's that's pretty screwy and they don't do it to american citizens so they exempt they basically just exempted congress from it and it's in the bill and um, they don't have the guts to take it out that's that's so, actually uh, infuriating so well, it should be it so, should be i mean you know rules for thee and not for me i mean that's what we ac- accuse the biden administration of doing you know, not paying taxes on the $20 million they've received. So, but, you know, so it's, it's neither here nor there. So it's cleared the procedural rule, and now now it's going to go to the floor. Is that what's, that's what's happening? Yes, sir. Well, we, but it cleared the procedural rule so we can debate the amendments and we can put amendments on. So that was actually a good thing. It's a good thing now that it's going to the floor because these amendments can be addressed. And hopefully we'll... We'll do some things like take, you know, take con- put Congress back in the bill, just like every American citizen. Now, is it and, just uh, is it is it just me, or when you hear the media ratcheting up that uh, Christopher Ray is out there saying that there's growing fear of a coordinated attack, that they're almost trying to gaslight us into approving, you know, or co-signing this FISA stuff as citizens? Do, do you feel that same way? One hundred percent. As a matter of fact, I tweeted about that this morning on my ex account at Tim Burchett. And I said, um, let's see. uh, uh, It's amazing that FBI Director Ray is concerned about FISA reauthorization concerning terrorists, but is silent on our border. And and they just we, we just recovered. We found out time and time again that terrorists are coming over our border and were allowed in our country over a year now. Excuse my language, but what the hell are they doing here? Why aren't we pulling them in, locking them up, or at the very least deporting them? Um, you know, they're here to do us harm, and uh, and we just keep allowing it. And they're coming over our southern border, yet all of a sudden they need FISA so they can spy on American citizens, um, and they can spy on foreigners, which – They've done to get at American citizens. The thing is infuriating, brother. Well, and it blows my mind because I see a report from CBS News last night where they're talking about this growing fear of a coordinated attack. And and you know what they don't mention is the wide open southern border. Of course they don't. Of course they don't because they're anarchists, dude. They want to destroy this country. There's no clearer proof than, than that southern border. We've got 10 to 14 million people have come over our border. We don't know who they are. We don't know where they are. We have over 100,000 Chinese here that are that, that are illegally here. Now, what's going to happen? Where are those 100, it's like 140 that we know of, 140,000. Now, where are they and what are they going to do when China rolls on Taiwan? Where are they going to be? Are they going to be going down to the Marine Corps recruiting station and, and enlisting? I'd say probably not, and if they are, they're probably doing like they did. We found in the Navy a couple of communist Chinese that we we um, arrested here this year, which you don't hear anything about, that were involved in espionage, that were in the Navy, were officers. Yeah, well, this thing is it, we we better wake up, man. Yeah, and I I hate to correct you on the air, but it is newcomers now, uh, uh, Congressman. Yeah, they're illegals, dude. You can correct me all you want. Somebody, somebody told me the other day, Bert, if you're not careful, they're going to reprimand you on the House floor. And I said, good. I but, hope they do. And I'll just use that to run for re-election for the next hundred years. But the Chinese nationals, nobody really talks about this as much as they should. And it, 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 it infuriates me because it's like we hear about the crime from the illegals from Venezuela. But the Chinese come in in record numbers and they're silent. And we don't hear anything else about the uh, illegal police stations that the Chinese were operating in America. We don't hear anything about the bio labs that the Chinese were operating in America. And it just seems like there's radio silence on on a real threat that's happening right underneath our nose. Well, it's not a conspiracy when it's when you when it's just happening on such a broad scale. And I I just keep telling people that's what happens when 15 percent of the population votes. And 20 million so-called evangelical Christians decide to stay home on election day, and they let they take their their electoral voting advice from the View. Now, you know, God help us. You know, he's going to wipe us off this dadgum map, and we're just, And the thing is, the, the most most infuriating thing about it is, brother, we are not 
they're not taking it from us. We're just giving it to them. Yep. By our apathy, we've let our school systems become infiltrated by these people. We let our FBI call moms, school moms, who are angry that their kids are being shown and taught pornography in the classroom, that they've labeled them domestic terrorists. We've let them call pro-life Catholics domestic terrorists. And we just play ball with this bunch. It's time, man. We need to throw the money changers out of the temple. I'm with we've you. Got, we've got to get to the polls. And I, I say, and there is, I hear people say all the time, well, Bertie, they're just going to steal it from us. Well, dadgummit, put enough points on the board so they can't steal it. I, I'm, Load it up. I, I'm with Load you. When, when people say, well, what would Jesus do? I always remind them that flipping the tables is within the realm of possibilities. Yeah. I, I have a lot of listeners that, that they're frustrated. They're angry when they see what's going on and they want to know what they can do. What is the plan of action for your average citizen? Here's what you do. You get on that dadgum computer and you research your congressman. I don't care if you play golf with them. They go to your country club. You're in, they taught your kids Sunday school class. Listen, these guys and gals, a lot of them come up here they side with the left wing. They cut their little deals, so they're included. All they care about is getting reelected. They go home, and they feed y'all red meat at your Reagan Day or Lincoln Day dinners or what have you and talk about capitalism, all the great things, and they'll, and they'll cuss Nancy Pelosi or whatever. Bad gum. And then they come back up here and just vote you down the river, and that's what they do every time. And then guess what? We reelect them yeah. every time, 90-something percent of the time. Because we got the population is lazy. We want our pizzas in 30 minutes or less, and that's about our dadgum attention span. And I'm guilty of that, too. But look, follow the votes on this stuff. Don't listen to these lame excuses. Use that brain God gave you and, and get to the polls. And if they're no count, throw them out. So what do we do? I mean, and in, and in Tennessee, it's just you and Ogle standing against this kind of stuff, it feels like. Well... I think there are others. I mean, they're, you know, they're not as vocal and, and, you know, I, I just don't care anymore. I've, I've seen it. I've seen it. And uh, I just see it up close and personal. And, and I, I would just hope that, that folks would, would get ticked off. Well, I get ticked, go to the poll, start asking questions and say, why are, and start asking your congressman, why are you not taking a stand on this? Why are you voting for this stuff and hold them accountable? Hey, I, I can't can't speak for anybody else from in Tennessee except for me. I hear you. I hear you. But sometimes it's like the silence from these guys speaks volumes. Well, I hear you. But some of them is just not in their nature. And I get it. You know, they they're gone. I, I just think I just think it's time in the Republican Party where if it's not a fighter, it's time to re- if you if you're not a fighter, it, it's time to retire. Well, we're gonna lose our country. And um, and we gotta we gotta do better. We just gotta do better. And I'm, you know, and they'll demonize me, and the big boys hate my guts, and I know it. They go behind my back. They flew two people up here to run against me in the primary, and they they did their little opinion poll, and they couldn't spin it. They they couldn't spin it to even influence some of them. So, uh, um, but you know, we got a great country, man. My dad fought and killed people for it. Hell, my mama flew an airplane during the Second World War. She'd lost her brother fighting the Nazis. And to think that in this short amount of time, we're just going to turn it over. It's just, it's just unbelievable. I would hope people get angry and get to the polls, top to bottom. It's not just Congress, man. School board, city council, county commission, your county mayors, your city mayors, county court clerk. I mean, it's all there. It's all there. And it's, you know... The best thing you can hear out of Washington is that I have nothing to report, that we are just stalemated because we have got to – and turn off the dadgum television. Those people hate this country. They got so much invested in Joe Biden, they're not going to let him fail. They will hook or crook. They're going to put him back in the White House if we're not careful. We're- that literally, he is inept. He's mentally uh, He's mentally gone. I mean, I think, I think that uh- – we we understand that about the Democrats, but when it comes to the Republicans, there's still question marks. Where do you stand currently on Speaker Mike Johnson? And has he had any conversations with you about FISA? And what were those conversations like? 
here, I, I'm disappointed, obviously. I think we as conservatives, though, have not stood our ground with him and, in, and enforced the fact that we are the reason that he's there. And I'm talking about nationally. If we were to kick him out, it would just hand the gavel over to Hakeem Jeffries. When we kicked McCarthy out, we knew within 100 percent, we knew 100 percent that we were going to get a Republican in the speaker's chair. We don't know that now. You, you, you talk about you, you talk about uh, I mean, this thing, it'd, it'd be like a grease pig, man. If they had the House, the Senate and and the White House, you would see so much of our civil liberties being denied and reversed and everything would be from taxes to education to you know transgender whatever it's it's all of it all of it they would run that through so fast because they know that they might not have another shot at it for a while and you could literally see us lose our country in the next three or four months if we were to kick him out that's how serious has he had conversations with you about the FISA renewal I have not talked spoken to them about FISA. I mean, I, I don't, I don't think they need to talk to me about it. I think they already know where I am. I, I've been pretty vocal about it from day one. I was, um, I was CNN. I guess they thought they were taking a shot at me. Uh, they put out that I. That, was, that's a shocker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was against it. That killed it. You know, and 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 uh, I said, well, great. You know, I didn't. And then I found out it was uh, Luna and Gates were the other two. And I, I called I called Gates. I said, hey, are you against this thing? I haven't, you know, I haven't checked. And he said, yeah, I am. And I was like, well, great, I am too. I already publicly said it. And then, um, you know, then you had 13 or 16 others come on board, and that, and that was fine. So so um, where do you stand with Marjorie Taylor Greene when, when she's talking about uh, – possibly trying to uh, force Johnson to vacate. You're, you're against that? Well, I was just sitting with her just not 30 minutes ago on the House floor during the debate, and I was denied the ability to make a point on the debate. Um, I, you know, we're still friends. I just, I just think it's a – I think she's playing chess. She's not playing checkers. She is – if she – you know, her, her part of doing that, I think, has is, is, is been – helpful in bringing this FISA vote back around, getting these amendments to put on this thing. Um, I feel like that that's, that's going to be hanging over Mike Johnson's head till, till he leaves that office. And I think every time he makes a vote, he's going to look at that and say, do I need to be doing this? And the people around him, I think, I think he's ill advised a lot of the times, I think because he took half of McCarthy's staff with him, and that's part of the trouble with government. It's just too dadgum big. Well, why did he hold, why did he hold over half of that staff? Well, like I said, it's like Trump. Why did Trump? Um, why didn't he fix the uh, State Department? Why didn't I mean you're talking about fifty people or something? You know, you got you got advisors on everything, Middle East. You know, but um, but to be and, fair, to be fair with Trump, when he got in in 2016, he was still new to all of it, and he's trying to learn the ropes and also appease the Republican Party that he basically just busted into with a sledgehammer so like i could understand that a little bit johnson i feel like you're more uh hip to the game yeah he'd been here what 10 years or something i think and mccarthy had been here over 20 and i i just honestly it's just so dadgum big you know he went from one day he was literally organizing the speeches on the house floor for debate you know the and and giving an award for the person who gives the most speeches to um, next day, literally on a plane flying to Israel to negotiate with Benjamin Netanyahu. So he was kind of thrown into the deep end on that deal. And I mean, I'm not making excuses for him. I'm just telling you the reality. And I think it's just so big and that he had very little time to, to put that together. I think if he had to do it over again, I think he'd probably load it up with, with some other folks, but, Again, that's not the way I would have done it. I'd have fired them all. And I would have gotten like two or three people around me that I trusted at a press guy. And, 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 uh, and I'd have gone and I'd just gone toe to toe with everybody. But that's me. I'm and, not big on big, big staff. And, and, and this is why Tennessee loves you. Congressman Tim Burchett, thank you so much for making some time uh, for us today to, to talk about all this. I really appreciate you, man. Two things. 
pray for our country, and vote. Yes, sir. Will do. Appreciate you. That's Congressman Tim Burchett at, uh, is it at Tim Burchett on Twitter? Yeah, at T-I-M-B-U-R-C-H-E-T-T. And thanks for saying my name right. Dad gummit, these people, I've been up here six years, and you can't, it's it's Burchett. I mean, listen, listen, I I get like one out of ten names right, so I don't want to take too too much of a a high horse on that issue. (laughs) All right. Sean Hannity, he had me on and called me Burchett one time ago. Actually, it's Burchett, uh, but I was retired. I told him that at the end. He goes, yeah, I'll fire my staff. I said, no, don't fire him. I said, I'll never get back on your dadgum show again. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Hey, appreciate you. You're welcome on the show anytime. Uh, the the greatest congressman that we have in Tennessee, Tim Birch. Appreciate you, man. It is 927 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. My name is Chris Hand. I want to tell you about my friends at Busy Bee Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. It is time. It is time past time get your ac service the best way the busy bee way with busy bee plumbing heating and cooling if you don't get it serviced you are essentially waiting for a problem to pop up this time of year it's about to get hot and stay there so be proactive keep your unit in tip-top shape whether you need that annual maintenance repair or replacement plumbing heating or air system the guys who i trust are busy bee plumbing heating and cooling and you're not going to find a better value on replacement systems if that's something you need to do maybe your ac went out at the end of last season you've been kicking the can on replacing it guys it's going to get hot and then it's going to stay there you know how the summers are in tennessee so if you need to replace that ac do it now and you're not going to find a better value they offer up to 12 months with no payment no interest with approved credit at busy b and it'll also pay in so many ways to become a beehive member that beehive hooks you up you'll get front of the line service thorough annual maintenance on your plumbing heating and air systems no overtime charges 24 7 and 10 percent off all repairs it will pay for itself self to become a beehive member plus busy bee will always come see you on saturday because they know a lot of conservatives work during the week they want to make sure they can see you so you're not stuck waiting over the weekend they have those convenient availability for maintenance calls busy bee your rude pro partner for satisfaction guarantee call busy bee plumbing heating and cooling 615-775-7833 that's 615-775-7833 or online at busybeehvac.com I'm Ken Weaver with your top stories. Full forecast in two minutes. And right now in Tennessee, a Memphis police officer and a teen suspect have died after an exchange of gunfire overnight that injured two other officers and another teen suspect. 
That second officer in critical condition, a third with a bullet graze to the hand. The other suspect, a 17-year-old, is in critical condition. Karen Travers in Washington, where the president's taking a lot of heat for rising inflation and costs to Americans. President Biden announced Friday morning another 277,000 Americans will get their student debt canceled. The president this week also announced new plans to cancel debt for 30 million Americans. That will be rolled out in the coming months. Here in Nashville, Riley Strain's death investigation still open. Metro police say they're conducting more interviews and waiting for the autopsy to be fully completed. Strain's body discovered in the Cumberland River on March 22nd, two weeks to the day he went missing after a night out with his fraternity on Lower Broad. That's the latest news. Weather is next. I'm Ken Weaver, WTN News. I do everything from scrubbing cages to asking people for donations to um, answering the phones and helping facilitate get, getting animals to the rehab. Um, I'm there on the weekends up there taking care of animals with the team. You got a, a great team there. It's a small team, but a great team that works together. And well, I started about 20 years ago. Uh, my dear friend Carol Burgess founded Harmony in Fairview. Okay. And we decided to reopen it in West Nashville. And we are rocking along. Lots of, lots of animals. One of the primary calls that we get are, I found a bird, it's on the ground, what do I do? And in most situations, you should let it alone unless there's an imminent danger to that animal because the parents are helping it and feeding it and it just needs a couple of scary days on the ground until it gets back <laughs> uh -huh. up into flight. What about bunnies, Melody? Can we give advice about bunnies? Yes, the bunnies, <laughs> they're just the sweetest, most innocent creatures and we just see the worst things happen to them. Cats, dogs, lawn mowers, weed whackers. In most cases, if the animals aren't injured, if you can put the rabbits back, that's always better to be with the mother rabbit than to come to us. All the storms that have been coming through and just destroying nests and a lot of babies will be found on the ground. Renesting is possible and preferable. You play the video calls and you put the baby near where they found it and the mama will actually come down and, and pick it up and then bring it back. Oh, nice. Bed. Isn't that cool? Nice. Wow.
940 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Thanks again to Congressman Tim Burchett for, for calling in. You know how nice of a guy Tim Burchett is? Like, he's so authentic. He literally, I, I missed the call, but he called me while we were in break. What did he say? And left me a voicemail. And he said, thanks for having me on. I, I forgot to say thank you. Dude, that's awesome. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, not just that little thing. Need, yeah, exactly. Not something you need to do. Yep. Listen, I tell my kids all the time, uh, Congress is full of liars and cheats, but in Tennessee, we have Tim Burchett, so there, there's a little <laughs> bit of hope. <laughs> honestly. Honestly. Yeah. Bright spot. There's a bright spot. It's crazy. Came and fired up this morning. I, I love that guy. <laughs> love great. that guy. Brought the heat. You want me to run through a brick wall? Just Mr. Burchett, point and, and tell me which wall. I love how he said, listen, I'm so glad that he said that I got his name right and gave me kudos because if you remember the interview from yesterday with John Amachukwu, yes. he corrected me for saying his name saying wrong. His name wrong. Yeah. And I know I know how to say his name. It's it's like whoops. So Yeah, that's a that's a tough one. There's less there's less excuse with Burchett. Yes. Yes. Uh Tim Burchett. He's still he's still this guy's still texting me. He's still texting me. Did we just become best friends? <laughs> yup. <laughs> so, uh, all right. It's an agenda-free Friday. Woo! Anything you want to talk about, we can talk about. It's 615-737-9986. Sharon uh, on the Members Nutrition text line, who's also a member of the Red Pilled Moms Club, said, Burchett isn't just the best congressman in Tennessee. He's the best in all of Congress. Facts. Fact check true. That was the quickest Mac fact check ever. Yeah, no research needed. Also, uh, I'm a little bit disappointed in you. Why is that? You, uh, oh, Todd. Todd on the Members Nutrition text line is wondering if I'm just a, a kiss A. I'm not. Oh, come on. I'm not. Don't you guys remember how like, I argued with Andy Ogles? You remember that? <laughs> I don't do that kind of stuff. Um, all right, so uh, I'm mad at you. Yeah, why are you? Yeah, what's going on? Why are you, you beef let, with me? You let the Murphy show usurp our bit which one the one where you're wearing chief's gear every day after the super bowl until you run out without a repeat whoa 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 this is uh you let them usurp it <laughs> i'm unfamiliar with that term fact check it i will fact check i'm it. always excited to, to expand to, the vocab that's used great it correctly uh i love it what are they doing what are they doing they're 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 hijacking our bit <laughs> hey hey listen that you you got to talk to them if they if they need more more time filled because they don't have enough of their own bits. <laughs> hey, they got to use our bits. That's on them. You got to discuss that. I, I, I tune in. I tune into the Murphy Show, and all I hear them talking about is uh, the Chiefs gear that you're you're wearing. They are. They, well, he likes he likes updating it. He, I think Murphy at this point is, is 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 he just thinks it's sad that I'm still doing this, which I haven't I haven't put on what I'm wearing today. I was yeah. To, what do you got? What do you yeah, got let me, today? Let me let me let me go get it for you. If you're watching on Super Talk TV, uh, Mac is getting his Chiefs gear of the day. He's been wearing. Chiefs apparel every single day since the Chiefs won a Super Bowl. Oh, uh, and he, he's been doing it without a repeat. What day are we on? I believe this is 42 or 43. I got to double check the doc. Check the doc. Yeah, I'll check the, I'll check the doc on this one. And uh, for those of you keeping score at home, today is a big day. Mac has started breaking out the jerseys. Oh, yeah. And he started... With Mr. Swift himself, <laughs> Mr. Oh, yeah. Pfizer, had to. Had to. Mr. Bud Light, <laughs> Travis Swifty. Look at this guy. Well, and it's nice, you know, two things at once. I mean, that's what I, that's what a producer does at all times. I'm doing two things at once, too. Listen, so, you know, it, you just, know, it just works. This Come is on. true. We love two things at once. <laughs> it's actually, that's pretty clean. Thank you. Yeah, the, all, yeah, the white. I mean, it, it's and for, nice. And for a Chiefs fan... I can assume it's it's hard to keep a white jersey clean during yep. these games. Oh yeah, that thing's crisp. Thank you, I appreciate that. Did you hear that? that yeah, that boom? was yeah, that was weird. I was wondering if you heard that too. It's construction blasting over in the gulch. Oh, okay, good. Nothing bad will happen. <laughs> Everything's fine. Didn't, Although the crack in the newsroom keeps getting bigger. <laughs> Didn't we have a street cave in a couple weeks ago? Yeah, over in the gulch. Weird. Probably has, probably has nothing to do with all that blasting. Nah. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, day 42. Day 42. Come a long way. 
You have. <laughs> you have. Who's counting? You have. All right, it's an Agenda Free Friday. Anything you guys want to talk about, we can talk about at 615-737-9986. If you want to roast Mac for wearing the two things at once jersey, you can. Uh, we will take your calls on that as well. I did want to play some audio. Trump. Trump has made a statement about RFK Jr., which I thought is uh, fascinating and a little bit hilarious. Uh, Trump went on record. Trump went on record and said, uh, I like, he essentially, essentially this message boils down to, I like him. He's better than Biden, but he's dumb. RFK Jr. is, as you know, the most radical left candidate in the race. He's more so than the Green Party. He's more so than even crooked Joe Biden. But he's uh, got some nice things about him. I happen to like him. Unfortunately, he is about the Green News scam because he believes in that, and uh, a lot of people don't. Uh, they want to see our country become rich and wealthy and strong and powerful and lots of other things and not waste money doing something that nobody wants and everybody knows doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, I like him. I like him. He's better than Biden. He's a radical leftist and he's dumb. It's quite the statement. Uh, he, he, he really uh, leans in on the Biden stuff, though. He says, you know, what, what we've all kind of been saying here on Super Talk, RFK will take more votes from Biden uh, than Trump. And, and Trump leans into this pretty heavily. I guess that would mean that RFK Jr. is going to be taking away votes from crooked Joe Biden. And he should because he's actually better than Biden. He's much better than Biden. If I were a Democrat, I'd vote for RFK Jr. every single time over Biden because he's frankly more in line with Democrats. He is. Where, where's the lie? It's so funny. So I grew up in Massachusetts, not Canada, Massachusetts. And I have a friend who is, uh, I don't know how you say this. He's dumb. Uh, he's dumb. He's dumb. <laughs> we all have those friends. Love him. Love him to exactly. death. Exactly. Love him to death. He does a little podcast thing, uh, and he was on. He was on the. Uh, I'm not talking about you. <laughs> I was like, oh no, I'm not talking about you. People know where I stand on you. <laughs> so this friend I have, he goes by the name Schmack Schmory. No. <laughs> um, so my friend in Massachusetts, he's he does a podcast thing, and like, he was on the Marianne Williams train. You know Marianne when she was running for president? Yep, yep. I see him post a video last night, and now he's on the Cornell West train. Mm. And I said to him, I said, I said, bud, what are you doing? Just support RFK. You're almost there. I was like, you don't want Biden. You're, you're almost there. Why, why wouldn't you? And, and I, I felt like, I, then, I, then I heard this audio after I'm sending these messages to him. I'm like, I, I sound like Trump. He's much better than Biden. If I were a Democrat, I'd vote for RFK Jr. every single time over Biden. This is like this is what I'm telling this guy. Uh, he also had some things to say about RFK's running mate. RFK Jr.'s running mate, Nicole Shanahan, is also a very liberal person, but that's okay. She's got plenty of money from her ex-husband. <laughs> that's it. That's all he said about her. That was, that's it. that was it. On. That was it. He moved right on. Uh, her ex-husband was the founder of Google. Yes. Sergey Brin, is that his that's his last name? Uh yeah, I believe so. Yeah, I probably butchered that one. I got Tim yeah, Burchett's name right. Yeah, you so. got that one right. All right. Uh and he said, uh he goes on, he's like he keeps dig digging in. He goes, Kennedy is radical left, uh, but he but he is better than Biden. This is like the theme of the video. <laughs> Kennedy is a radical left Democrat and always will be. But he's a better man than Joe Biden, that I can tell you. It's great for MAGA. I hope he continues to run. But the communists will make it very hard on him to get on the ballot, as they did for him as a Democrat. He wanted to get on the ballot. They made it very, very difficult for him. They really went after him viciously, just like they go after me. Uh, welcome to the crowd, RFK Jr. <laughs> <laughs> welcome. Welcome. welcome to the crowd. Welcome to the crowd. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's welcome to the club. It's welcome to the club, right? It is welcome to the club. It reminds me of the meme with the nooses where the guy's looking over. He's like, first time? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he says, uh, he, he goes on, he keeps going. He's like, he's like, you know, expect RFK to be indicted. It's just the way the Democrats do things. They're going to indict RFK over something. But the fact is that the Democrats are vicious, communist, fascists, they're horrible people. 
They really hurt him badly, what they did to him as a Democrat. That's why he's running as an independent. But expect him to be indicted any day now, probably for environmental fraud. He is uh, Crooked Joe Biden's political opponent, not mine. I love it. He's, he's Biden's opponent, not mine. Not mine. Not mine. Biden can't speak. Biden can't debate. Biden can't put two sentences together. So I guess he's probably going to indict RFK Jr. That's <laughs> like, I love it. I'm here for it. This is an AI. This is, this is, no, this is real. <laughs> I love it. This is real. I'm going to, at a certain point, I'm going to use this, this exact clip for uh, an intro. Biden can't speak. Biden can't debate. <laughs> Biden can't put two sentences together. Right? Uh, so basically this video was RFK is not good, but I like him. Yeah. Yeah. I like him. And Biden's way worse. If I was a Democrat, <laughs> why would I vote for Biden when I could vote for RFK? <laughs> Uh, all right. It's an agenda free Friday on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Matt in Fairview has a very interesting topic. Matt, we'll talk to you next on Super Talk 99.7 WTN.
A Tennessee police officer is dead. So is a suspect in a shooting that left two other officers and a second teen suspect injured. A prescription medication shortage and FISA reauthorization still in question. But you got to hear what Tennessee Congressman Tim Burchett is concerned about. Coming up at 10 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Thank you, Ken Weaver. It is Super Talk 99.7 WTN. My name is Chris Hand. It's an agenda free Friday. What do you guys want to talk about? 615-737-9986. So Matt in Fairview, uh, he's hanging on the line. He wants to talk about suspect descriptions. The descriptions of suspects. Or the lack thereof. Yeah. Isn't that cool? This is what I love about Agenda Free Friday. That's going to be an interesting conversation. Looking forward to that. Uh, Mike in Atlanta, real quick, wants to talk about Tim Burchett. What's up, Tim? Uh, what's up, Mike? It's Burchett, not Burchett. I just, see, I told him I would mess I it up. I just did it, too. <laughs> what's up, Mike? <laughs> hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? I was a grassroots activist for the uh, National Rifle Association for about 20 years. Okay. And uh, I learned something that all politics is local. Uh, Burchett. He uh, hit it the nail on the head. You know, uh, we got to do stuff locally all the way down to the dog catcher. Um, really, if you think about it, the only the only election that's national is the president. And the closer the office of the person that, that you're electing is to you, the more effect they have on your life, like your code enforcement or, you know, I don't know if that's elected up here or not, but... Um, and it's not really that hard if you look at how many voters actually go out and vote. It wouldn't be that hard to, if you motivated enough people to put on a charity event or something or play a game of pickup football, you might be able to turn the tide and, uh, and, and change who's in office. I mean, it's, you just got to look at the numbers. Um, if where I'm at in DeKalb County, um, the Republicans don't even run a candidate because the they they just like it's a waste of money you know n nobody ever runs against democrats in our in our area and it's all demographics that's that's based on demographics i, I yep. think that they're being foolish but well, I mean, the one thing the left does better than us, and thanks, Mike, for the call, is they're they're organized. So find your army, build your army, get organized. Now, I got a text here from Tim, who not not Tim Burchett, but but another Tim on the Members Nutrition text line. He said he said thank you, Tim Burchett. Find a Tennessee constitutional Republican chapter near you. Get involved. And then he had a quote which I love. It says, "Take an interest in your government before your government takes an interest in you." It's ten o'clock on Super Talk ninety nine seven WTN. Ten o'clock on the dot. I'm Ken Weaver with your top stories. Looks like we got a crash in Sumner County that has closed Vietnam Veterans Boulevard eastbound right there at Gallatin Pike. Full forecast in two minutes. Right now in Tennessee, a Memphis police officer and a teen suspect have died after an exchange of gunfire overnight that injured two other officers and another teen suspect. That second officer in non-critical condition, a bullet grazing the third officer. The other suspect, a 17-year-old, is in critical condition. Memphis police say the officers responded to a call of a suspicious vehicle around 2 o'clock this morning, and when they approached the vehicle, someone started firing at them. The officers returned fire. Police say the 18-year-old killed in the shooting was arrested and released without bond last month for stolen vehicles and having a programming device used to steal cars. Police say he had illegally modified semi-automatic weapon with a Glock switch attached. And a group that represents pharmacists says it's seeing the highest number of drugs in short supply since it started tracking the issue more than 20 years ago. Details from Eva Pilgrim. We are seeing a nationwide shortage now hitting a record high with more than 320 medications listed in low supply. Diabetes drugs, some antibiotics, cancer treatments, ADHD and injectable medications among those that are hard to find. About one in three hospitals reporting they've had to skip, delay or use less medication 
due to supply gaps. Now, this according to the American Society of Health System Pharmacists. Well, the House is debating an extension of the expiring portion of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act that allows warrantless spying on Americans to protect against terrorist attacks. The House is weighing whether to require warrants when the FBI searches the vast collection for data on Americans. That amendment, backed by civil libertarians on the left, conservatives on the right, including Tennessee 2nd District Congressman Tim Burchett. But Burchett tells WTN's Chris Hanshow... I don't know how I'm going to vote, even if they put the amendment on, because they still exempted Congress from the thing. The White House opposes the change, saying it would create a backlog in a highly valuable intelligence program. That's the latest news. Weather's next. I'm Ken Weaver, WTN News. Hey, it's Chris Hand for my friends at USS United Structural Systems. I've been hearing the USS commercials on Super Talk for years, way before I got my show here. But when I did get my show here, I had a chance to sit down and meet the guys at USS. And I got to tell you, uh, they're exactly what everybody else tells you. Honest. Good guys, hardworking, proud of the work they do. In fact, USS is so proud of the work they do. When they do work for you, they leave it with a lifetime guarantee. We've had some rain. We're going to get some more rain. And waterproofing is their specialty at USS. So if you're getting water in your house, in your basement, in your crawl space, call the guys I trust, United Structural Systems. How do you know if you're getting water in your house? Well, you'll probably notice standing water in your crawl space You're probably going to see wet basement walls, maybe cracks in your basement floors. Those are all uh, signs that you're getting water in your home, and that's your house trying to tell you something. Call the guys at USS. They'll come out to your home, come up with a unique custom game plan for you, and they won't leave until the work is done and you're satisfied. They've been doing it in Middle Tennessee since 1994, and they have 25,000 satisfied customers that will back them up. Call USS today if you're having waterproofing issues. 615-488-7855. Waterproofing is not all they do. In fact, they also can help you with the sinkhole on your property. They can help you with foundation repair. Basement and crawl space waterproofing is a specialty, though. 615-488-7855 or online at USSTN.com. We're live. All right, perfect. Yeah, this one's all you. It's called the Chris Hand Show. Oh, all right, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I like walk in. I hear the music playing. I look at Mac, and Mac goes, "Yeah, we're we're uh, we're back." No, we're here. All right, it's, it's time. An, it's an agenda free Friday. Woo! We're very a little lackadaisical today. You know, I'm pumped, man. But it's Friday. Yeah, I'm ready to talk about whatever people want to talk about. The sun be shining, my man. Finally, hype, hype. Just stay out this weekend. Yeah. 615-737-9986. What do you guys want to talk about? Matt in Fairview has a fascinating topic. What's up, Matt? Hey, brother. What's going on? Hey, thanks for holding, man. I, I'm, I'm really interested to talk to you. What, what do you got? What do you want to talk about? Uh, you, you know, uh, it, 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 it caught my attention the other day, not on purpose, the TV was on. I hate TV, actually. 
But it was on the other day, and they were talking about a murder suspect that was a uh, a large male, probably a hundred and probably one hundred and seventy pounds, uh, with a tattoo on the right side of his face, in purple underwear and white sneakers, driving a two door red sports car. And I said, did they did they really just do that? Did they just give a murder suspect and not talk about its heritage? You know what I mean? Yeah. Or, or what potential color he could be? And I was like, yeah, be kidding me. And then I found. I pay attention next day. The same thing happened. You're talking about be on the lookout for a murder suspect that's a male, 158 pounds, you know, with a tattoo, driving a red sports car. You know, you cut that thing in half. Just tell us what heritage he is. And it happens everywhere, bud. It happens everywhere. It's such a damn joke. The media's a joke. We need to blow up TVs. Well, isn't it? It's it's uh, it's Coulter's law, right? And Coulter said it a long time ago. The the longer they go without telling you uh, the the racial demographic of a suspect, the the more sure you can be that that person is not white. Yeah, but hey, look, throw it out there. That's all you got to do. Throw it out there. Make, we might find one of these criminals. But no, no, I, I'm with you 100. percent And and I think that it needs to be said. How do you know who you're looking for if you don't know who what they look like? There you go, bud. It's, uh, but we're just dumb Americans. What do we know? You know, we voted Biden in. This is true. Uh, uh, he's uh, the most popular president in history, actually. Yeah, yeah. Well, with with the most critically acclaimed female vice president in history. No, oh, she's busy. She's busy. I'll tell you this. I don't get a whole lot done between nine and noon because you do a great job. Ah, and you should have you should have Chris Burchard on every Friday morning for a segment. Yes. That, that, dude, that dude's pretty solid. He's awesome. A big, big fan of Tim Burchard. And, and, but the thing about the descriptions is weird, too. Uh, if, you follow, if you follow some meme accounts like I do, I, I, I tend to uh, – I'm, I'm just a humble meme farmer. Um, but if you follow, like, End Wokeness, Libs of TikTok, all, all those guys, they'll, they'll show you uh, crime suspects, their mug shots, and then the description, too. And and oftentimes uh, you'll have you'll have Hispanic uh, individuals listed as white, and I wonder what that does. I wonder what that does to the crime stats and the data that's being gathered. Well, you know, it's uh, take it all with a grain of salt. But you you got to stay off that stuff. But you know, you can't be on Facebook. You can't be on Insta Talk or whatever it is anymore. <laughs> you know, just believe what's in front of you. Yeah, I- I'm with you, man, and I appreciate the call. I think it- I think it's a fascinating fascinating conversation. Appreciate you, uh, brother. Keep kicking it, man. Thanks. Hey, so much. hey th- thanks so much. Thanks for listening. Appreciate you, Matt. Uh, Matt and Fairview. He- he's he's not wrong. He's not wrong. And then what does that do? What does that do to the crime stats? You know what I mean? It, it, it is a, it, it's an interesting topic. And, and recently, I don't know if you knew this, uh, the FBI was caught cooking the books. They're not even, they're not even really collecting crime data from a lot of cities. It, it is, it is quite the conversation to have. It really is. Uh, Joe in Nashville, you're next on this Agenda Free Friday uh, on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. What do you want to talk about, Joe? Hey, Chris. Enjoy your show. Appreciate you, man. I got to just want to get your opinion on why do you think they're suppressing the manifesto from the Covenant shooting? Uh, because it doesn't go it doesn't go with the narrative that they want to portray. You know, it, it's it's mental illness takes front and center when you when you talk about who the shooter was. Okay, because I was trying to figure out how long they can hide it. Uh, they'll they'll hide it as long as they can. And and shout out to uh, Stephen Crowder for for getting out what he got out because we learned a lot from that leak. Yes, we did. You know. Well, thank you very much, Chris. You have a wonderful weekend. Hey, appreciate you, Joe. Jeff in Winchester, you're next on this Agenda Free Friday. What's up, Jeff? Chris, how are you, sir? Good man. How are you doing? I uh, staying out of trouble, trying to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, a few years ago, I was nosing around, and, and you, you know, you, the public can access the FBI's crime database, and I thought it was interesting that there at that time, now it may have changed, but at that time, uh, when you look at uh, crime statistics by race, there was no uh, Hispanic or Latino category. It's all lumped into the white category. Yep, it, it's it is uh, it, it's crazy, right? Because like you, yep. you don't get a real picture of it. Nope. Um, it, but the, the, and I appreciate your call, but the, the crime stats, I mean, the, the FBI cooks the books. This is, this is a news clip that I found the other day. So if crime's everywhere, why do they say crime's down? 
A new report from the FBI shows that there was a 13 percent decline in murder. Despite what the data shows, which we've been talking about, the fact that crime is going down in most places is not registering with the public. I can safely walk my dog mm -hmm. to the Capitol today in a way that you couldn't do uh, when uh, when we all got here. So, it's you know, the Democrats always say crime is down, crime is down. It's funny about that Pete Buttigieg clip because I can safely walk my dog in the Capitol. You know, mind you, he has security, right? Uh, but that same day, uh, there were people that were robbed and I believe shot walking their dogs in D.C. It's amazing. But but what Jesse Waters found is that the actual statistics that they're using to say crime is down are patently false. I'm glad Pete can walk his dog, but why should we believe the FBI? Well, turns out we shouldn't. The Washington Examiner did some digging and discovered the FBI has been cooking the books. Did you know about half the country doesn't send their crime statistics to the FBI? So the FBI just estimates the number of crimes and then they estimate in the wrong direction. Murders are actually up 23% across 70 cities since 2019. You don't say. In Milwaukee, the FBI reported a 13% drop in robberies. But Milwaukee police reported a 7% increase. Weird. The Biden administration is using Enron-style accounting to cook the books on everything from crime to the border to the economy. And then the media reporters, they just regurgitate the propaganda and they wonder why the country's soured. We don't trust them and Trump's winning. Well, I will say this. Uh, I've heard the economy is doing great. <laughs> but, I mean, are you shocked? The FBI is cooking the books. The, the, this administration cooks the books on everything. They, they do. This has been happening. Incessantly. I mean, Jim Cramer was yelling from the, from the rooftops that uh, they were cooking the books on the job numbers. You know, we, oh, we got all these jobs, but they're, you know, they're going to foreign-born workers. Either illegal or, or legal, you know, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. So they cook the books on the job numbers. They, they cook the books on the crime numbers. They cook the books on the economy. I think that at this point, if you believe anything that comes out of the current administration, deep state, uh, you're, you're not really uh, doing yourself any justice. You got to do your own research, right? You have to. I've, I've heard Mur Murphy say this, you know, uh, he's don't even, he was talking about another host uh, some years ago. You know, don't, don't even believe what I say. Do your own research. Everybody has to. And an informed citizenry is their worst nightmare. So do your own research, please. I, I beg of you. I beg of you to look into everything. Don't believe anything. Because they'll lie to you. They've lied to us time and time and time again. But it's not surprising. At, at this point, we, we, we shouldn't believe anything. 615-737-9986. 615-737-9986. an agenda-free Friday here on the Chris Ann Show. We can talk about quite literally anything you want to talk about. The way the news cycle moves these days, it is so fast. So fast. So there's stories that we can't get to. There's stories that I prep throughout the week that I can't get to. Uh, it, it's just the way that th the news cycle works. So if I miss something that you want to talk about this week, if there's something you want to talk about again, you didn't you didn't have a chance to weigh in on, uh, by all means, today is your day, 615-737-9986. Checking out the Members Nutrition text line, uh, 6234 said, do your own research is correct. Just don't trust Google and YouTube experts. Fair. Fair. You know, Elon Musk was talking about the soft censorship of Google. How, uh, where do you hide it? What's the best place to hide a body? Did you, did you hear that? I didn't. He said it's the second page of Google. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, but that is, that is uh, soft censorship. Soft censor censorship. Uh, 6872 said doing your own research is racist. It's true. It's actually dangerous to do your own research. It is very dangerous to do your own research. Somebody's got to do it. It's a, it's a wild wor world that we live in.
It really, really is. Uh, never, never did I imagine we would get to this point where quite literally the evening news is lying to us. And it's, it's sometimes it's not even like a an outright lie. It, it's a lie via omission. Like our friend Matt and Fairview was saying, you know, they give a description of a suspect, but they leave out a very important thing. They just omit it. That's what they do. Censorship by omission. Or they push it to the second page of Google. Yep. Makes out. Uh, checks out, right? Stephanie McMinnville wants to talk about Trump and abortion. Stephanie, what's up? You're next on Super Talk. Okay. Hey, how's it going? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic, Chris. I'm trying to figure out why the evangelicals are mad at Trump for what he said the other day. Um, I understand that it's not, it, we're not hearing what we want to hear. You know, abortion is not banned everywhere. But, you know, Trump is on our side. He's a good guy. We're not going to get what we need out of Biden. I mean, and, and it needs to go back to the states. I mean, that's where it needs to be is with the states. We don't need a federal law. And conservatives are supposed to be the people who want less government, not more. I just I don't understand why everybody's mad at it now. And we're giving the Democrats what, what they want by making this election about abortion. Oh, we absolutely are. And then they blamed him they blamed him for the Arizona law as well. Oh, you know, this is Trump's fault. Yes, I saw that. And I'm just like, guys, don't let them do this. Don't let them break us up. I mean, we but, need to but stay what focused. they what they want to do, I mean, the Biden campaign, they don't have anything else going on, right? So they're trying to buy right. votes. They're trying to buy votes with their student loan. They know that abortion is going to motivate their base and their their younger voters. And, and they want to make the election about that. Because if they make it about the economy, if they make it about the border, if they make it about foreign policy, it, it, you know, we go down the line. If They lose on everything else. They lose on everything else. They yes, they do. And our side is losing focus because Trump is a man that we need to stay with. It needs to stay with the states. That is constitutionally correct. And and Trump has a vision. We've got to take this one step at a time. Well, and we, it's, you know, you know, it's like the Rome wasn't we, built in a day. Listen, we have to be happy with moving the chains down the field. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. Thank you. That's all I wanted to say. Don't I, be losing. Don't be turning on Trump now, people. No, I mean, uh, I, I don't think, I don't think, and, and I appreciate your call, Stephanie. I don't think the majority of people that are upset with Trump about his abortion decision are turning on him. But I do know that the Biden campaign is absolutely trying to make the election about abortion. In Arizona, the Biden campaign launched a seven-figure ad buy about abortion. Seven figures. That's, of course, because of the, the their state Supreme Court's decision to uphold the 1864 law that bans nearly all abortions. There's this ad. He says, uh, because of Donald Trump, millions of women lost the fundamental freedom to control their own bodies. And they're going to try and use this abortion decision to go after Trump and Carrie Lake in Arizona. Carrie Lake just came out and said, you know, it should be a state's decision. Uh, and and she's she's not for the total ban. I think that's very strategic. And I think it has to be strategic. If you come out and you say, we need to ban all abortion everywhere, no matter what, listen, you're going to scare away the middle. We don't want to scare away the middle. We have to just be patient and get there incrementally. The left does this very well. They didn't capture the education system overnight. They, they didn't uh, capture the media overnight. It was little by little, they chipped away at it. If we want to advance our policies and we want to hit our goals where abortion isn't a thing in this country anymore, we have to take baby steps, no pun intended, but like we have to slow walk it. Otherwise, people are going to freak out. Frogs in a bucket, right? Or, you know, frogs in a pot. Don't hop out. It had to be very, very strategic. It's 1021 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN.
All right, drivers, we have a crash blocking the left two lanes of 40 westbound at Spence Lane. And then in Sumner County, only the right shoulder is open. Vietnam Veterans Boulevard eastbound at Gallatin Pike because of a crash. Learning more about the exchange of gunfire between police and suspects in Memphis. And hear more from Tennessee Congressman Tim Burchett about the pending vote on FISA today. That's at 1030 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Thank you, Ken Weaver. It is Super Talk 99.7 WTN. My name is Chris Hand. Find me on Twitter, True Social, Instagram, at Chris Hand on air. Mac Mori is my producer. Mac J Mori 25 on the Twitter machine for Mac. Mac's really just doing sports stuff. <laughs> Come to me. <laughs> Come to me for the memes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Larry wants to talk about researching stuff. Larry, you got to be careful when you do it. It's dangerous. Yeah, yes, sir, it is. Uh, I was an uh, intelligence uh, analyst, and uh, I wanted to tell all of the listeners that if you really want to prove something, you really want to get to the bottom of it, the best way is to, uh, you know, to go with your uh, presupposition, do everything you can, find everything you can to prove it. But then you have to pull yourself away, go over to the other side, take your bias away, and then try to prove that. And the two will uh, kind of weed out all of the, uh, you know, all of the uh, untruth and, and uh, you know, the garbage. And you should be able to come up with something good. Um, I do that all the time. And, of course, I support Trump because most of the stuff I find, he's right. And the left is just trying to, you know, trying to confuse the issue. So you but, said you uh, said you did in, you, you said you did intelligence work. What's what's your background like, Larry? I'm a retired uh, naval intelligence officer. Worked for a Defense Intelligence Agency. What what sources do you like with that kind of background? Well, luckily, over the course, everything we do now, you know, that we would have could do out here in the public is going to be uh, non classified, so it's open source. But there are certain. Uh, there are certain sources that I trust because over the course of time, they've proven to be true um, or true more than not. And, uh, and it's typically the more conservative stuff. I mean, if you're going to just start with uh, the major uh, news networks, Fox is probably the most middle of the line, but they're not totally middle of the line. It mm -hmm. just kind of depends on, uh, uh, you know, what the story is. Um, but you know, do everything. Go go to you know go to the Washington Times. Go to the Washington Post. Go to the New York Post. Go to the New York Times. I mean, just go to all of those types of of places and, and just pull the information as best you can. And there are there are many sources that give you statistics. Some um, of the bias and all. That's, that's good advice, Larry. I think we lost your call, but I appreciate you chiming in with that, and uh, I respect your background. Thanks for your service, and uh, yeah, it's, it's very good advice. I, I do that myself. I, I try to look at uh, as much leftist sources as I can. Um, you know, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's hard. But you got to do it. And, and at the very least, you have to do it so that way you know what, what the game plan is from the left. Because oftentimes, they all repeat the same talking points. I think we got about... 30 seconds left for another call, and we have the perfect caller for it. Uh, here is a moment with Malika. You're next on Super Talk. What's up, Malika? Hey, thanks, guys. I'm looking. I um, uh, hope you're having an awesome Friday. I'm looking uh, into watching Alex Pierce. Is she really conservative? Is, is she really somebody to watch, or is she just somebody faking it? So I just want to know about her. I've heard of her through social media. Thanks, guys. Hey, appreciate the call, uh, Malika. I, I knew uh, we had 30 seconds. Malika's the one to go to. Who's Alex Pierce? You know, I, I yeah, I, after screening the call with Malika, which is always the best, by the way, Malika's great. Uh, yeah, couldn't, I mean, I mean, I see her. I, she's an influencer. I just can't see much about her. I haven't been able to really deep dive here. Interesting. Um, yeah, I, I, am, uh, I am unaware with Alex Pierce. Uh Social media influencer shares very controversial advice for ugly women. Don't go to college. Use the money for plastic surgery. No man wants a woke woman. I don't know. 
Hmm. I'll have to look into this. It seems like uh, it seems like very conflicting <laughs> advice. Yeah, exactly. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Get, I don't, I'm get not, married, move out of cities. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I like I like that. I like that. I don't really like the plastic surgery advice. Yeah, I don't know about that. Um, well, we'll dig in a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we'll dig in. Yeah, we'll find some stuff we'll, out. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll look into this. We we'll got an answer for you. It's ten thirty one on Super Talk ninety nine seven WTN. Sam in Nashville. We're gonna get to your call next on Super Talk. I'm Ken Weaver with your top stories. Got the full forecast in two minutes. Right now, we're learning more about the exchange of gunfire between police and suspects in Memphis this morning. One of the three officers injured has died, as has one of the teen suspects. Doctors and pharmacists are reporting more than 320 life-saving medications in short supply in the U.S. Experts putting some of the blame on not enough big pharma companies producing cheaper generic drugs. And Tennessee Congressman Tim Burchett telling WTN's Chris Hand show he's still not sure he can vote to reauthorize FISA because an amendment still does not protect U.S. citizens from warrantless surveillance. If they're going to look at you as an American citizen, they don't need a warrant. But if they're going to look at Congress, they'd have to get a warrant. It's very reason Burchett, Burchett and Tennessee Congressman Andy Ogles and 17 other GOP congressmen blocked reauthorization earlier this week. That's the latest news. Weather is next. I'm Ken Weaver, WTN News.
1036 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. My name is Chris Hand. It's an agenda free Friday. We can talk about anything you want to talk about at 617. It's not 617. That's the Boston area code. 615 737 9986. Boston. Boston. Uh, <laughs> 5811 says, Mac, what's your sports podcast? It is called uh, Under the, <laughs> under the Score Box. <laughs> Behind the box score, fifty-eight, eleven. Uh, I don't wherever. Think, I don't think that's it. I'm pretty. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's it. It could be on top of the. I don't. Now, now I don't know. On top, on top of the scorecard. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Behind the box score, wherever you get your podcast. When I choose not to pay attention to sports, I choose not to pay attention to Max podcast first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honored. Yeah, man. Seriously, I do. I make I'm on a top choice. of the list. I make a choice to avoid you first. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Mac does, Mac does fantastic work. If you want to check out Behind the Box Score, it's available on all the podcast platforms. Sam in Nashville wants to talk about fentanyl. What's up, Sam? You're on Super Talk. Hi, hey, brother. How are you doing? Good, man. How are you? I'm doing well. Um, I've come across the news article yesterday about an eight-year-old boy in Kentucky that died in March. Uh, the, the rumor was he died from uh, an allergic reaction to strawberries. And after autopsy, they found out that he'd come in contact with fentanyl. Um, his stepfather was a, a dealer. He ended up getting arrested for manslaughter. Um, but the initial rumor was all these strawberries had, you know, that, that are causing problems. The child was taken to the hospital with a rash. And it got me thinking. I started doing some looking up on what the latest uh, stats were on finding fentanyl, confiscating fentanyl across the border. In 2020, 4,800 pounds of fentanyl alone was confiscated at the border, whereas last year the number was 27,000. And that's an incredible jump, you know. And I started looking into uh, 27,000 pounds. One pound can kill a quarter million people. Yep. It only takes two milligrams, uh, which equates to four grains of sand. As a father of four, how do I prepare my children for the world that we've, we've, we've created? And not only that, what's to stop someone from going into your local grocery store produce section and just dusting a bag of whatever they wanted. Yeah. I mean, I hear you. It's like one of those things though. It's like, do you want to just live in fear or, you know, I understand that there's a balance between being realistic of the world around you or living in fear. I mean, it's crazy. I, I played a clip the other day where, where customs and border patrol confiscated one, 1. 1.8 million fentanyl pills coming across the border. That's what they confiscate. You know what I mean? What you think about exactly. when you think about what they're confiscating, uh, you know, the cartels send over a lot more than what's confiscated. You know what I mean? Exactly. So yeah. so the the amount that's on the street is insane. And I saw that story about the 8-year-old in Kentucky, uh his dad's being charged with manslaughter um because they because they determined he died of fentanyl intoxication. I I think that we really need to have much stricter penalties for fentanyl dealers. Um, I, I have lost, I, I have lost quite a few friends uh, from Massachusetts because of this stuff. Um, the opioid crisis hit Massachusetts very, very hard. Fentanyl came in and really took over that. And uh, I've, I've lost uh, more friends than I really want to talk about. Um, it's sad. Uh, I consider myself blessed for not going down that road, but, I don't know how we fix it. I, I think that one of the ways that we can is by making sure that we're we're bringing in politicians who are actually tough on this stuff. And, you know, I've had my, my issues with DeSantis running for president, but I think DeSantis is one of those guys that that is going after fentanyl dealers. He, he announced this the other day, and, and I appreciate your call, Sam. I, I think this is very important. Um, DeSantis says he's he's going after fentanyl dealers, and I think that we need uh, more governors and, and more elected officials taking stances just like this. I mean, it is very, very dangerous. We actually had a case in Florida, unfortunately. A family was renting an Airbnb unit, and you had a young young baby that was crawling on the carpet, 
and there had been residue left over from, I guess, whoever was using it before, is fentanyl residue, and it killed the baby just from being in contact on a carpet. So, so this is nasty stuff, and you have situations where when law enforcement personnel are responding to these situations that fentanyl may be involved in, you know, they really are putting themselves at risk because it's not like they have to start popping pills to be affected by this. So this bill 718 uh, provides that any adult uh, who through unlawful possession or, uh, of dangerous fentanyl or analogs exposes any first responder to that fentanyl that results in overdose or serious bodily injury, uh, that we're going to prosecute you as a second degree felon for doing that. I mean, and, and that's a good start, especially with first first responders. I, I think we need to be harsher on, on these dealers, period. Uh, I think that if you're caught with fentanyl, that that should almost be attempted murder, should it not? Uh, if you're if you're caught selling fentanyl to somebody that overdoses and dies, should that not be a murder charge? You you know what you're dealing with, like this is not a, a case where uh, somebody's selling heroin and, and somebody overdoses. And it's like I didn't know. If you're selling fentanyl, you know what you're dealing with, and, and I think that these penalties should be much much harsher. I, I hope that uh, Tennessee can can really get tough on this as well. Uh, Sarah and Dixon wants to talk about Newsmax. What's up, Sarah? Okay. I just think I listened and heard the gentleman talking about Fox. I don't have anything against Fox, but I think if you truly want to get the conservative view of the news, you need to listen to Newsmax. Yeah, I mean, Newsmax is okay. I, I don't have anything against it. I have right. I have some friends that work over there and uh, they they do a good job. I, I think that the the biggest thing that you need to take away from that is that don't get your news from one place. Even well, yeah, that you're right, you're right. Even e even networks yeah. like Fox and Newsmax are going to have a lean and a spin. And, and we also have to realize that these these news channels uh, they mm -hmm. they make money off advertising, and the longer that you can have viewers staying there watching the the more money you're going to get off your advertising and and i mean to to a certain extent we you know we have that same business model here and, and we have to be entertaining I, I make no bones about it i try to entertain you guys um but when you're getting your news you you need to have that in the back of your mind that's true. that that's true that there could be a narrative there could be a spin it could be outrage porn it could be fear porn it could be all these things so Take everything with a grain of salt and, and yeah. look at multiple sources. And, and especially when it's a big story, look at multiple sources from the same story. See where they yeah. differ. See what the changes are. See what the spin is and, and go yeah. from there. Yeah. And, and I want to thank you for being a Christian and taking a conservative stand. My little grandson, I was so tickled because he came in and he, he said, that's Matt Murphy. And I said, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Well, th so, thank, uh, thank you guys for listening. I appreciate you. Right. Thank you so much. And we pray for everyone's safety and everything that's having to deal with these issues today. Yeah. Amen. Amen to that, Sarah. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, Matt. Well, I mean, what do you want me to say? She's being so sweet. <laughs> She's being very sweet. I don't want to, like, correct her on the air. I know how it feels to get corrected on the air. It's true. It's not nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it doesn't feel good. We'll let it slide this time. <laughs> Plus, if I'm going to be compared to anybody, who wouldn't want to be compared to the great Matt Murphy? Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, that's fair. At least, at least you didn't call me Mac. <laughs> okay. All right. The distinguished gentleman in Lebanon, Calvin, is on the air. Calvin, you're next on Super Talk. What's up? Okay, Chris, and I won't call you Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you, brother. What's up? But, no, every time Tim Burchett comes on, you know, there's not very many lawmakers that I'm going to listen to. That is, that is the one exception, man. That guy is so true. I just believe everything he says. You know, we all grew up with someone in our life that and was usually an elder that was so smart that we listened to, just like Matt Murphy with his talk, uh, me with my dad. Tim Burchett, every time he comes on here, he says, we handed this to them. We did hand it to the left. 
Yep. I called in the other day about the power of the vote, and I got off the phone and I thought about that. How do you how do you take this power of the vote? And it, it takes unity. It takes unity. And this media is dividing this country with mistruths and fake news. Chris, after this three years, we should all be out in groups hugging and embracing each other and riding in the streets on the truth and the facts. And taking this country back, we have the power to do that. But it takes all of us to come together. And there's no unity in this country. And I don't know how you fix that. I don't know how you fix that. We got the most important election. We're fixing to lose this country, just like Tim Burchett says. We're going to lose this dang dumb country. Yep. And, and I just don't know how you bring people together to get this done. I but mean, we're going to have to. Even even some Republicans, it's like we're going to have to drag you kicking and screaming down the right road, you know? Exactly. It, it, but, it, but you're right. We need we need more unity. I don't know how we fix that. I mean, once— This media is so corrupt. Uh, and, you know, it's just like you just told the lady, don't get your news source from one place. What do people do? They turn on the TV. Well, did you hear what I just heard? Uh it, I just don't know how you fix this one. Uh, it, it, I'm not giving up on this this election, but if we don't get some kind of unity to bring us together and get us to the post. And see, it, it, it takes it like Tim Burchett says. It takes it changing our judicial system, police chiefs, school boards. We can't just base this unity on just uh, one area of getting Trump in. We have to go every time there's a vote. The change, the judges are killing this country. Yep. Uh, so the anyway, Soros that's DAs. All I, I mean, say. there's there's so much to it. I will say this, Calvin, and I always appreciate your call, man, and uh, thank you for calling in. I will say this: a at the end of the day, we we have to look at this Biden administration as the blessing that it's been, because the pain and the dysfunction that this man has caused has caused quite a, a a number of people to wake up and realize what's going on around them. Trump did that as well, but but the Biden administration has done it to a much larger extent. And you see it. You see it when you're on social media, and you see it in the polls. You see it when Trump goes to Chick-fil-A. Uh, people realize what is going on. They know what time it is. There's there's a, a a viral video from a Gen Zer uh, that that's been going viral on TikTok. I keep seeing this everywhere, but it's the perfect example of the Biden administration causing so much pain that it's making people wake up. Somebody explained to me in crayon eating terms. I, I will just say this: I, I love the way he says that. Can you explain it to me in crayon eating terms? Somebody explained to me in crayon eating terms why I make over three times the federal minimum wage and I cannot afford to live. And I do not want to hear the pull yourself up from your bootstraps, work 90 hours a week. That's not the goal, guys. A one bedroom apartment, $1,800. Two bedroom apartment, $2,200. Who the f can afford that? It is embarrassing to come out and say that it is a struggle to survive right now. But I know so many people are struggling. And he's right. So many people are struggling. But that that pain and that dysfunction that Biden has caused it is making people wake up. I don't think that guy's going to be voting for Joe. Do you think he's vote? Do you think he's going to vote for Joe? Do you think after what he just experienced these past three years, he's going to do the same thing? I doubt it. I absolutely doubt it. Also, uh, I want to point out the Members Nutrition text line. They have uh, really uh, everybody started calling me Matt. <laughs> have you noticed that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Matt, you sound great. Love this new younger energy. <laughs> <laughs> we did. She did call back, by the way. Oh. She called back and she said, oh, I'm sorry. I knew it was Chris Hand. I just got it wrong. And I was like, no, no, no come on. Don't I don't, care. You know I don't fun. care. No. I, I thought it was funny. Yeah, we did it. Yeah, we thought it was great. I thought it, I loved it. 
It gave us something to joke about. Yeah, exactly. And in this day and age, in this economy, in this current political climate, I will take every opportunity I can to smile. Bingo. Because you know what? Uh, that's what drives them the most insane. When when they're trying to make you miserable, when, when the left is trying to take everything away from you, and you're still having fun, they, they just drives them nuts. Have fun. Smile. Enjoy life. That's what it's about. It's 1052 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. My name is Chris. And listen, uh, in today's day and age, you, nobody's coming to save you. Your financial future is going to be your responsibility, but you don't have to do it alone. And I want to tell you, you need to meet up with my friend Paul Winkler and his team at Paul Winkler, Inc. You know Paul. He hosts the show, the Investor Coaching Show, every Saturday here on WTM from 3 to 6. Looking forward to listening to his show tomorrow, but you may not know that he started that show after he spent time studying under an economist who went on to win a Nobel Prize. That's Paul's background. That's kind of where he cut his teeth in the industry, and that's pretty cool. He's an avid collector of financial planning designations also. He has up to eight now. And, and my wife and I, we work with Paul. We heard him on WTN way before I got my show here, and we were learning from him way before I got my show here. But that's just the tip of the iceberg from what you can learn from Paul. And, and I suggest that you work with Paul because when I got my show here, he's who I wanted to work with, and it's because he holds himself to the highest level of fiduciary status. Because of that, he wants me to make sure I tell you I'm paid to do these commercials. That's the truth, but I'm not paid to be a client. I decided to be a client because him and his team, they don't work on commission. That is a game changer for me because I can be sure when they're helping me make decisions for my financial future, it is for my financial future and not theirs because nothing is done on commission. They're not just trying to sell me a bill of goods because it affects their check. What they want to do is educate you along the way, and they will educate you along the way so you never get that uneasy feeling of blind trust. They'll take a look at your entire financial picture because your financial picture is going to be unique to you. They'll break it down and then... They'll help you make decisions. Set up a 15-minute phone call today. Go to paulwinkler.com. That's paulwinkler.com.
Hear the frantic police call for help after a fatal exchange of gunfire. Also, FISA reauthorization still in jeopardy because of the amendment. At least one Tennessee congressman tells us does not protect U.S. citizens from corrupt bureaucrats. These stories are more at 11 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Thank you, Ken Weaver. It is Super Talk 99.7 WTN. My name is Chris Hand. Find me on Twitter, True Social, Instagram, at Chris Hand on air. And uh, call in. Let us know what you want to talk about. It's an agenda-free Friday on the show. Anything you want to talk about, we can. Nothing is off the table. 615-737-9986. It's 11 o'clock on Super Talk. I'm Ken Weaver with your top stories. Full forecast in two minutes. And here in Tennessee, we have learned that a Memphis police officer and an 18-year-old suspect are dead after an exchange of gunfire that wounded two other officers. Tennessee, investigating a suspicious vehicle a shot at overnight in Memphis. Investigators say when cops approached the car, after shots were fired from inside. One officer other identified officers. as Joseph and McKinney on the force since 2020 was killed. Police also returned fire, killing an 18-year-old suspect in the car. On dispatch audio from Broadcastify, you can hear the chaos. Yeah, we get the more cars. We have an officer there. Two suspects fled the scene but were quickly captured, and two other officers were wounded in the gunfire but are expected to survive. Is is Ken back out of the multiverse? <laughs> Dude, this is why Gen X should not have access to social media. I feel like that was a Kenception. It was. It was Kenception. Here's what's funny. I I'm trying to post a story to social media from your interview with Tim Burchett. <laughs> You're posting about me on the socials? So, yeah, I am. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, here's the thing. I, I'm asking Mac. <laughs> I don't even know how to ask Mac what I wanted to do, but I figured out how to do it. He did, on his own. However, I forgot to turn it off. <laughs> so, so it's our was, YouTube. <laughs> so what was going on, my link to our YouTube feed, which I put in the story... Was still rolling. <laughs> so it was just I will, delayed, I, Ken. I will tell you this. Uh, <laughs> some of the most criticisms I receive about the show is that we don't have enough Ken. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just got a big old load of Ken. There. Got, so I'm glad, I'm glad that we've uh, heard the complaints and we've answered them. We have. <laughs> we doubled up Ken Weaver. <laughs> 
Can't say we don't listen to oh, criticism. No, wow. we listen to our audience. <laughs> People want more Ken Weaver, they're going to get yes. more Ken Weaver. Oh. That was man. awesome, man. I mean, I, and here, here's the thing, man. I have always I have always told myself if something starts going wrong, just keep on going. You did too. You so did. I just kept on reading. Mac is like looking at me. I'm like, ah. I'm just I'm just going. Well so you I did. Were just <laughs> I had gone to break and Ken I can see Ken still just like determined, like, I'm doing this newscast. Yeah. It was awesome. So, uh, w- what's the headlines, Ken? <laughs> <laughs> if we want to recap, yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, so I, I'm posting the story, you know, and going back to one of your callers and, and and your point, Chris, about, you know, you you got to investigate stories on your own. Yeah. So here's the thing. Here's what we learned from Congressman Tim Burchett. This amendment that they're trying to shove into this FISA bill protects Congress from warrantless spying, but not U.S. citizens. And our network is not telling anybody that. And I'm not seeing that anywhere, but you heard it right here on WTN. Isn't that amazing? And so that's what I'm posting is what is in this amendment and the reason that Congressman Burchett and probably Andy Ogles and the 17 other GOP members probably will vote this one down too. And I hope that they do. It's like, they work for us, right? Does everybody still understand how this works? They work for us. And then Speaker Johnson is trying to placate them by saying, well, how about if we just, how about if we reauthorize FISA for two years instead of five? That way, if former President Trump gets reelected, then he can come in and change it. Yeah. And then they can spy on his campaign the whole way in. See? But <laughs> my efforts on social media, oh my goodness. <laughs> I felt like you were working twice as hard. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> oh, 901 on the Members Nutrition, Members Nutrition Super Text line says, it's the Matt Hand Show with the Weaver Twins. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my gosh, that's embarrassing. Uh, Todd said, Mac, quit quit letting Chris Murphy hit the buttons. (laughs) (laughs) But a weird day. That's what's going on, man. I feel you on trying to push through, though. And I I knew something was up when I saw Mac panicking. (laughs) The other day, I lost all audio in my headphones in the middle of a call. But Mac had no idea. So, like, Mac... (laughs) Mac is just doing Mac things, which is probably looking at sports stats. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> and so Mac isn't, Mac's not panicking. So I just kept, I'm pushing through. Like, all right. Oh. Yeah, everything must be fine. Mac's not panicking. Yeah. Oh, With Ken, man. I was panicking. <laughs> well, I mean, man, I tell you what, it was like I was on an acid trip <laughs> <It was so laughs> weird. listening to myself because I could hear myself. Then I heard the first delay. Then I could hear a third delay. <laughs> And it's like all of a sudden, man, I just wanted to start just saying, yeah, dude. <laughs> it's very meta. <laughs> right on. <laughs> Speaking of acid trips. I love it. I-, I talked to Mac about this the other day, and maybe you remember this, Ken. <laughs> Do you remember uh, the Pittsburgh Pirates pitcher by the name of Doc Ellis? Yes. He hit a, he, he pitched a no-hitter on acid. <laughs> really? Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I was telling Mac about this the other day off the air. Because anytime anytime I find something fun in sports, I'm like, I I know who to tell. Wow. On June 12th, 1970, Pirates pitcher Doc Ellis did something uh, that that should be completely impossible. He threw a no-hitter despite being high as a kite on acid. He was probably seeing himself launch rockets yeah, exactly. instead of a baseball. So there's there's a documentary about this on Netflix. Oh, my God. I got to watch this. That everybody should watch this weekend. <laughs> so he, he threw a no-hitter. He's interviewed in this documentary, and he said, uh, I couldn't see the batter. What? <laughs> what? He said, all I could see was like a, like a fuzzy outline. I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> this guy's lucky he didn't kill someone. Yeah, right. literally, right in their head, yeah. yeah. And he threw a no-no. <laughs> I wonder what his average speed was. Yeah. Oh, man. 
So they, they say that he he basically didn't realize he was pitching. He went to visit a friend the day before his start, took some acid, stayed up way too late into the night drinking and doing drugs. Wow. Took wow. more took more acid. Uh, lost track of what day it was, which that checks out. That's all tracks, yes. So, yeah. And then he woke up the day of his start thinking he was supposed to pitch the next day. <laughs> oh. Took another hit of acid at Whoa. noon. Took another hit of acid at noon, only to learn two hours later from his friend that he was supposed to be out on the mound against the Padres. <laughs> wow. So Ellis got on a plane and made it to the park 90 minutes before his first pitch. Oh, wow. The 70s were a wild time. I, how did he crazy. maintain? So Yeah, what? He, he said uh, he managed to get from one point to another uh, while being, being high on acid is a, is a miracle. Wow. He said how he got on a plane and got there before the game, yeah. 90 minutes before the game, was a miracle in itself. <laughs> <That>. <laughs> and now, see, I'm interested, like, if he did that again, would he Would he be, like, if he did it twice and it was both times he performed great, then he'd be like, okay, now we got to do some research into to acid and athletics. Like, does this access something? Listen to this. Listen to this. He says, wow. he, says he goes, I started having a crazy idea in the fourth inning. That Richard Nixon was the home plate umpire, <laughs> and and at one point, what? at one point, at one point, he goes. At one point, I thought I was pitching the baseball to Jimi Hendrix, <laughs> and he was holding a guitar, swinging it over the plate. He goes. <laughs> He said, I remember diving out of the way of a ball I thought was a line drive. I jumped, but that ball wasn't hit. (laughs) And he threw a no hitter. He's jumping. Ah! (laughs) He's like a Democrat with bird flu in the way he thought the ball was coming right at him. Man, Man, there's got to be YouTube video. Yeah, I was about to say, I got to. There's a whole documentary on this. And if I look at it, I promise I'll take it down before the 1130 cast. <laughs> I think people want to know about this. This is one of those stories like nobody talks about. Wow. That is crazy. I people can't... are like, people are like, did Shohei Otani know his interpreter was betting on baseball? I'm like, did you know <laughs> that in the 70s, Doc Ellis threw a no hitter high on acid? <laughs> Tripping off his rocker. On... He, Goodness. He couldn't Ow. find the rocker. Yeah, exactly. I just love it. He thought he thought that Richard Nixon Richard was a home plate Nixon, umpire. Jimmy wow. Hendrix. Probably hadn't had anything to eat for That's three what I'm days. I'm thinking too. No, no food. Probably no, no water or anything. Yeah. Just <laughs> my gosh. Wow. Isn't that love insane? It. It's amazing. It's so, so baseball, also. Very baseball. Yeah. <laughs> just show up. Do great. Yeah. Very baseball. Did you hear an NBA player is uh, could be banned from the league? <laughs> What for? for for betting. Oh, so uh, there's a guy on uh, the uh, I think it's the yeah it's the Raptors. Mm. John Tay Porter. He could face a permanent ban uh, for for betting. So NBA Commissioner Adam Silver said Wednesday afternoon that this guy's under investigation by the league following mul- multiple instances of betting irregularities over the past several months. Because uh, th- there's there's an enormous uh, disparity. Apparently, this guy was doing prop bets, yeah, and, and then taking himself out of the game. Oh. Dang! So he's betting unders on himself, yeah, and then taking himself out of the game. Yeah, nice. Oh wow! Man. Come on, dude. Yeah. Wow, that's nuts. And uh, yeah, this is the perfect time for the NBA to do something like that. Not a prominent player. You're not taking out a star guy. Right. Yeah. It's, it's not Durant. Yeah. Set, yeah. Set the standard <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah. This isn't LeBron James. Set the standard now. Don't do that. Yep. It's not Luka Doncic. Yeah, and then, exactly. And then with everything Yikes. going on with the MLB, covering for Shohei Otani and his betting stuff. Yeah. Because I feel like they have to be covering for that guy. I don't know. I, I, I thought that. But you read the story. I mean, some of these text messages that they found that that guy was getting, that Ipe, the trainer, was getting, it's pretty scary, man. What were the text messages? Text messages is like, hey, I see your client. Walking down the street right now. I haven't got my money. It'd be a shame if something happened to him. Oh, things like that. Yikes. Yeah, things like that. Like, really scary. Yeah. That is insane. It makes it seem like he really was just using him. And Ooh, he didn't know. Oh, man. Yeah. He's making over, you know, 25 bets a day. He's betting 
sometimes $160,000 a day is what this says. As and he wasn't as- paying. He wasn't paying yeah, up. Yeah, he wasn't was paying it? up. Yeah, he wasn't paying up. Oh, Millions of dollars, you know, as are stacking good as, up. As good as Shohei Otani is, I don't know if he could do it on acid. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just, just, this is just me. Uh, all right. It's an, it, clearly, clearly it's an agenda-free Friday yes. on the Chris Hand Show. Anything you want to talk about, we can talk about it. 615-737-9986. Terry in Lebanon, you're next on Super Talk. What's up, Terry? Hey, Chris. You're doing a great job. Oh, um, thanks, man. During the, uh, in the late eighties, early nineties, I used to spend a lot of time in Toronto and Ottawa. Mm-hmm. And I was just wondering from your point of view, are there two or three significant events in Canadian history that you can recall that <laughs> led to the current communistic regime? Uh, <laughs> in, my, feel- in my personal opinion? You, in your personal opinion. Yeah. I would, I would have to say, uh, if the rumors are true, the the Trudeau love child with Castro would be the one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I I used to feel totally safe there. It was the people in on chair in Toronto were just wonderful, and uh, it was you know all about free speech and do whatever you want as long as you don't hurt anybody, you know. And now it's totally changed. Yeah, no, it is It is a different beast. I have a, I have a friend that lives in Canada, uh, one, of, one of my best pals. He lived in Massachusetts growing up. And, and uh, under the current FISA uh, stuff, you know, I, I could be I could be caught up in uh, warrantless searches and, and uh, wiretapping because uh, I make phone calls to him. <laughs> it's crazy. Whoa. It's crazy. Hey, I appreciate your call, Terry. Thanks so much. Right. And uh, I am not Canadian. Uh, Mike and Morrison, you're next on Super Talk. What's up, Mike? Hey, what up? Uh, I got to say, acid is some crazy freaking stuff. I have seen uh, videos of this guy high on acid in the back of a cruiser. He's going around, kicking the windows, kicking the roof. A uh, guy who arrested him said he was too wild to even buckle in. He was handcuffed. That's for about all they could do. He said the guy was in the back there. He was kicking around. He was yelling, stop. And then a little later, he's like, Jim Carrey, sex. And we're like, God? <laughs> and he was just so high. And he's, like, spitting on cops and whatnot. Oh, later, he, came, he comes back and apologizes to the cops. And it's like he had no idea what he was doing. That's insane. I, I know what YouTube videos I'm looking up this weekend. Thanks, Mike. Uh, I'm going to do YouTube videos like that. That's the weekend planned out, man. (laughs) So funny. Uh, Our our friend uh, Tom Davis is on the line to give us an update on his primary against Scott Desjardins. What's up, Tom? Hey, Chris. I'm doing well. I just got a a quick one this week, and the the one is the FISA vote. And, yeah, I, I got a problem with the FBI, and so I would be a no on renewing this mess. So that's just me on that one. And then the other one, um, I was in Miggs County, and they are telling me out there that the last time Congressman Desjardins was even out there, and they weren't even sure. They kind of thought that went through the process of, like, when was it? And they came up with 15 or 16 was the last time that he was out there. So That's yeah. crazy. <laughs> uh, when is when is your primary against Desjardins? When is that happening? The, the primary is the 1st of August. And and I got a couple videos up on this too on the YouTube's, and that's uh, Tom Davis TN4. They can find me there, and also my website Thomas E Davis for Congress dot com, and then Tom Davis for Congress on Facebook. Well, I've had I've had quite a few texts today from people who are upset that Desjardins voted uh, in favor of the FISA stuff, and uh, you know if you're looking for an alternative. Take take a look at Tom, uh, and and I don't I don't think anybody else is running in, in this race against Desjardins. Is that correct? There are two other that have signatures verified or petitions verified. I have not been able to find websites, or I found one website which was a professional website, and then the other guy I I found some information on him, but no no website particular to this race. Interesting. There are two other guys that are that are out there. Well, if you're looking for an alternative to Desjardins, Tom Davis is running. What's your website one more time, Tom? Thomas E. Davis for Congress.com. Thomas E. Davis for Congress.com. Is, is it four or the number four? Uh, it's spelled out four. Okay, F O R. 
Thomas E. Yeah, Davis Thomas for e. Congress.com. If you're looking for the alternative, uh, take a look at Tom. Hey, appreciate you, Chris. Hey, Have a great day. Hey, thanks, Tom. You too. Uh, we got time for one more call. Mickey in Nashville. What's up, Mickey? Hey, how are you guys doing? I'm good. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. No, no, no. Uh, I don't want to mention disappointing days are late. Uh, just call to talk about the 80s. Uh, cocaine <laughs> right. and LSD. And, and fortunately, I was a musician. I used to get my stuff for free. And uh, tons of powdered coke snorted it, never injected anything. And oh, tons geez. of LSD. But never the bad <laughs> stuff. I, I mean, I, the, the, the times I can remember on cocaine and LSD were beautiful. The times I can't remember... <laughs> I don't have any. Uh, I don't have any mug shots. That's so, good. That's a good. That's a, you know okay. I, I think that's a W, right? Well, it's just like dinner. You know, you want to go to Morton's for a steak, or do you want to go to Applebee's? You know, you, you don't get your drugs from from a guy. You pick them up from at Burger King. You know, just uh, that. That's that's one one thing you need to look out for. Where do you get your drugs? Okay. <laughs> okay. You know, and that's gonna. You know, I mean, come on. It was a good time, and and fortunately for me, I I'm not advocating drugs. Kids don't do drugs. If you do, there'll be less for me. But if you yeah, just don't do drugs, it's bad. <laughs> but you know, Mickey, so Mickey, have you ever thrown a no hitter? I have not, and I I've never heard that story. I did stand in front of Randy Johnson when he pitched. Uh, I was making fun of uh, uh, who was it? She's uh, one of the catchers for the uh, for the Mariners, and uh, I was friends with a lot of the players. And the guy goes, "So you could get a hit off a professional hitter?" And I said, "Yeah, of course I can." So Randy said, "Come on, get up!" And uh, you know, I, I got up there, and he threw me one pitch. I wow. dropped the bat, and walked away, and almost started to cry. <laughs> 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 I was good, sir. I was good, sir. I had, had a couple of beers. And they were uh, getting ready for a game, and it was pretty early. And I thought, yeah, I can do it. No, I, I couldn't do it at all. You know, I was when I was but when Randy Johnson at 6'10 is, is up the mound and he releases, you just you don't even see the ball. Your knees are shaking, and I, I literally dropped the bat and almost threw up. It was it was I, bad. I can imagine. Thanks uh, thanks for the call, Mickey. I appreciate you. Uh, it's an agenda-free Friday on the Chris Hand Show. Anything you want to talk about, we can talk about it. 615-737-9986. You ever see the video of Randy Johnson taking out the bird? Oh, oh yes. Man. Yeah. Yeah. That Explodes. Is, that is a wild video. Uh, if you've never seen that, that that's worth that's worth the YouTube. It's 1122 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Hey, it's Chris Hand for my friends at the Glock Store. You hear Dan and Matt raving about the Glock store. I heard Dan and Matt raving about the Glock store. And I would think in my head, you know, it's a gun store. That's that's awesome. That's cool. Uh, it's, they got a range, right? It's a gun store with a range. How how different can it be than the other stuff? Because I've, I've been to gun stores. I've been to ranges. Well, um, I went and checked it out finally last week. And, and I got to tell you, uh, Dan and Matt are right when they rave about the Glock store, and I was wrong. This place is so different. The Glock store, in a word, is is amazing. It, the store is huge, massive, and it's well-stocked and staffed with the absolute nicest, smartest people you can find, especially if you have questions about home and self-defense. That's what they specialize in at the Glock store. Well, that, and of course, custom Glocks. These Glocks are beautiful you have to see it to believe it and one of the coolest things is they're making these performance parts at the glock store at the glock store right here in nashville from pyramid triggers to extended controls to tungsten guide rods and they install all of them for you for free while you wait but my biggest surprise from the glock store are the shoot 270 indoor ranges and what they offer or i guess i guess what they don't offer is a better description because they don't have lanes they have private shooting rooms with personal instructors. I have a, uh, a scheduled training on the board for a couple weekends from now. Very excited to get in there and train. 
I'm very excited to up my game at the Glock store. My wife is going to be tagging along with me to a few training sessions. I'm I'm even more excited for her to get in there and start training um, because, you know, when, when you're not around with your wife, you want to make sure that she's safe. And, and I know that once she gets that training from the Glock store, she's going to be able to handle her business should it ever arise. That's what they do at the Glock store. They'll help you up your game. The Glock store and GlockStore.com, minutes from the airport and worth the drive from anywhere. A Memphis police officer and a teen suspect are dead in an exchange of gunfire. And wait until you hear what the police chief has told us about the criminal past of the suspect. That past is not long past. This story coming up at 1130 on Super Talk 997 WTN. Thank you, Ken Weaver. Uh, Ken Weaver now available in mono. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's Super Talk 997 WTN. My name is Chris Hand. You may have seen this video going viral on uh, the internet, the World Wide Web, as the kids like to call it, uh, surfing the net. Uh, Lily Tang Williams. Do you know who Lily Tang Williams is? 
She's she's a congressional district in New Hampshire, District 2. Uh, it's where my sister used to live. My parents live there. Um, my, my sister's in Alabama now. Uh, the, the good sister, not the liberal sister. Um, just I just want to let everybody know uh, that's the good one in Alabama. So Lily Tang Williams shows up to an event where David Hogg is in New Hampshire. David Hogg, of course, uh, made himself famous by latching onto the Parkland shooting, and, and he was there for it, and now he's pushing gun control. Lily Tang Williams is a former, well, not a former, she's she's an immigrant from China, and, and she was an eyewitness to Mao's cultural revolution. She became a U.S. citizen. She is very anti-communist, and she found David Hogg at this event, and, and she confronted him about gun control and it is one of the greatest takedowns you will ever hear in the gun control argument. Oh, hold on. Let me hit the play right the right way. Uh, here we go. Hi, my name is uh, Lily Tang Williams. Welcome to my live free or die state. Actually, I am a, a Chinese immigrant who survived communism. And uh, under Mao, you know, 40 million people were starving to death after he sold the communism to them. And 20 million people died murdered during his cultural revolution. So my question to you, David, is that can you guarantee me a gun owner tonight? Our government in the U.S., in D.C., will never, never become a tyrannical government. Can you guarantee that to me? There's no way I can ever guarantee that any government will not be tyrannical. Well, then the debate on gun control is over because I will <laughs> never give up my guns. Never, never. And you should go to China to see how gun control works for dictatorship of CCP. Eleven thirty on the dot. I'm Ken Weaver with your top stories. Got the full forecast in two minutes. And right now, a Memphis police officer and a teen suspect are dead following a shootout that left two other officers and another teen suspect injured overnight. And the Memphis police chief says the 18 year old suspect killed had been arrested last month with an automatic weapon, but released without bond. Right now in our nation's capital, Tennessee Congressman Tim Burchett tells WTN's Chris Anjo reauthorization of the Federal Intelligence Surveillance Act may be in jeopardy today because of an amendment to exempt Congress from warrantless monitoring, but not U.S. citizens. It's a good thing now that it's going to the floor because these amendments can be addressed and hopefully we'll we'll do some things like take you know, take con put Congress back in the bill, just like every American citizen. So some wrangling going on. Speaker Johnson and Republicans who support passage of the law offering uh, to expand it for two years, rather reauthorize it for two years instead of five. So Donald Trump, if he's reelected, could make changes when he becomes president again. And in money news heading into the midday, stocks are down more than one percent. That's the latest news. Weather is next. I'm Ken Weaver, WTN News. Hey, it's Chris Hand for my friends at MembersNutrition.com. You've heard me talking about MembersNutrition.com and what they can bring to the table. Uh, if you're in the market for vitamins and supplements, you've heard me talking about the Youthful Cleanse by Daily Defense that you can get at MembersNutrition.com, which is so important if you want to kickstart your journey into becoming more healthy because the Youthful Cleanse will help you flush out all the toxins that are building up in your body, and they're building up from everything. The air we breathe, the food we eat, all of the stress that is accumulating in your life. And now, MembersNutrition.com, uh, they're bringing you these affordable and quality supplements like the Daily Defense Cleanse, uh, and the supplements and vitamins they're bringing are made right here in the USA. You can't say that about the big box stores. You actually don't know what country they're coming from. In many cases, it's China. So if you want to buy supplements from China, you can go to the big box stores. If you want to buy a vitamin and supplement from the USA, you can get it at membersnutrition.com. And it doesn't matter what you're in the market for. It could be anything. Immunity supplements, weight loss, detox like the cleanse, men's health, women's health, relaxation supplements. They have it all at membersnutrition.com, and you should go there now and see what they can do for you. Membersnutrition.com, and when you become a member at membersnutrition.com, you get an even bigger discount off the already discounted prices. Membersnutrition.com, buy your vitamins and supplements from the USA. Membersnutrition.com. <laughs> I like the new bump. 
bumper music on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Mac Mori producing. This is this is one of your selections for bumper music, correct? Yeah, this, is, this is more my style. This is uh, I, I think the audience is gonna like this new flavor you're providing. <laughs> oh, we lost. You cut the music. Yeah, you know, no, no more music, no more flow music. We're doing some some tech stuff, but it's okay. We're almost done. All right, word. Don't worry, but that jazz will be back. The jazz will be back. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we're doing an Agenda Free Friday. Anything you want to talk about, we can talk about. Sharon in the borough, you're next on Super Talk. What's up, Sharon? Hey, Chris. Hey, how are you? How are you today? I'm good. How are you doing? Great. So I was digging that jazz. Uh, me too. Mac, Mac is bringing <laughs> the heat. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I love Tim Burchett. Or Burchett. Burchett, Burchett, yeah, Burchett. You were right the first time. Okay, Burchett. Uh, yeah, he is the bomb. I, I, I love that guy. Totally agree with okay. you. So I'm disgusted with my Congressman Desjardins, and who I will not be why, voting for again. Why so are you was, Why are you disgusted with him, Sharon? Um, it's not just this vote. He's been on the wrong side of things a little, few times in the last couple of years, and so um, and you know, honestly, I can't remember what. Some of those were because I just remember going, uh, you're on the wrong side of that. And then thinking that several times. So now I'm done voting for him. I will not vote for him again. But I love that you had um, Thomas. Thomas E. Davis. Tom Davis. Davis. I think I'm going to be voting for this man. I think, listen, uh, and, and I, I feel you on, on Desjardins. That he's, he's my congressman in, in Murfreesboro as well. Um, mm -hmm. I, I find myself frustrated with uh, a lot of the lack of action. He does have a conservative vo voting record. Um, yes. I, I am torn as, as we head towards this next election. I will definitely mm -hmm. be giving Tom Davis a look. Tom is also a veteran. Uh, I've, I've met him a couple times. I don't know him too, too well, but every time I've met mm -hmm. him, uh, he seems like an absolute stand-up guy, and I think that anybody that is interested uh, in, in an alternative should look into Tom Davis. Thomas E. Davis for Congress.com. Well, I'm kind of hoping that you guys have him on your shows on this station more. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. As we get closer to the primary, I'll have him back on for sure. That would be great. Yes, ma'am. Right, hey, appreciate you, Sharon. Okay, bye. All right, that's Sharon in the borough. Mac, the music I love. <laughs> oh, all right, just have the band play me out, boys. It's 1136 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN.
Super Talk 99.7 WTN. My name is Chris Hand. It's 1141 on this Agenda Free Friday. The, the show has been absolutely flying by. Thank you for that. Uh, we, we can talk about anything you want to talk about. 615-737-9986. Donnie in Nashville wants to talk about traffic. What's up, Donnie? Hey, how are you? I'm good, man. How are you? Oh, I'm okay. Uh, Donnie for mayor is what I call myself. All right, uh, all right. Are you actually running for mayor? I'm thinking about it, yes. Yeah? Where, where would you be, where would you be I mayor? I can't find smoking. It's for Donnie or else. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's, that's pretty that's pretty similar to what the Democrats do. Yeah, well, that's only, I think I might have changed that because it makes me sound a little on the left. <laughs> <laughs> it makes you, it makes you seem more moderate. <laughs> <laughs> In the middle, anyway. But yeah. I do have... I do have the solution in actual traffic problem, uh, especially on the interstate. And this, I don't is, know why. Is this going to be? Is this going to be your? Is this your campaign platform? It is part of my platform. That and immigration, uh, we're big on that. I think that uh, if they charge you ten thousand dollars to be caught uh, working one that doesn't have a work visa or green card, like Florida did, it would probably ease that problem up a little bit. See, I'm in construction, <laughs> and 25 years ago, I realized that my government wasn't protecting me from a foreign invader back then, and why it takes so long for everybody to figure this out is beyond me. They're just now, you know, oh, it's immigration. Oh, it's bad guys coming. No, it's been going on for years, yep. and nobody until now seems to realize this. Now, back to my other uh, – see, I'm stumping as we speak, actually. But <clears throat> my other uh, point being Nashville traffic, especially the interstate. If you think about this – the fact is, when they were planning the interstates, I think Eisenhower back in the 40s or 50s, uh, they sent three interstates down through Nashville. Now, if you look on the map geographically, we're one of the only cities, especially major cities, that have three interstates in our in our downtown. Okay. So I live in Brentwood but commute all the time. I'm originally from Hendersonville, and I commute all the time. So when I come from Brentwood, I have to cross three lanes of traffic on the interstate and then get back on the other part of the interstate uh, heading toward the split, and I have to cross three more lanes of traffic. It's it's ridiculous. <laughs> now, if anybody's ever been to Dallas, and I just happened to have went there one time and luckily got there during rush hour, and if you've ever been to Dallas, you've noticed the elevated interstates. Okay? I don't know, you know, when New York got big, Chicago, even Nashville, they built up. So I just don't understand why nobody else understands that do like Dallas did in a few other cities build up and if nothing else put the trucks up there uh and when teddy o'connell says things like well we're going to put down a fast lane for people who can afford it well thanks fred the deal is that uh, a lot of people is not going to be able to afford just to be able to zip on down in the in the fast lanes so we're a lot of us are going to be stuck over there in the regular people's lane and it's ridiculous. Uh, I know that you have to apply for federal funding to get such a thing done. I'm sure Dallas did, but they got it. The point is, they got it. And I just don't understand why somebody can't think about it in t those type of terms and, and, and maybe elevate our interstates and go up with them. And if nothing else for the truck lane, because if you ever come off that hill heading toward Madison and you, you look in uh, where the split is right there at Trinity Lane, count the trucks. Just count them. It's, I just came through there breaking the law a while ago, listening to you on my phone, <laughs> and, and, and sat and looked at the trucks and went, it's amazing. It's amazing. If you took those trucks off the interstate, the, uh, at least the loop, how much traffic you would alleviate. But maybe it's, maybe it's just me. But right. that's why I'm running for mayor. <laughs> I, I love it. Thanks for the call, Donnie. I appreciate you, man. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hey, long time, first time caller, long time listener. Hey, Donnie, I want to have you back, especially when you win that mayor seat, all right? No, all right, buddy. Thank you. All, all right, brother. Appreciate you, Donnie in Bye. Nashville. He's, uh, he's got solutions. That's the mayor we need. Vote, vote for Donnie or else, he said was his campaign slogan. <laughs> I got a text here on the Members Nutrition text line uh, from 7486. Said it's time for Miss Kennedy to be back on her program. Talking about my daughter. I think it, I think it might be time to have Kennedy back. I, I did. I played this earlier on the morning show, and I, I think it's safe. I don't think he's in the car yet. Uh, I used AI to uh, encourage my son. Did you Did you hear this? Um, I only heard a little bit of this. So I, I've been using. So everybody asked me what what it is. It's Parrot AI. I thought I was going to use this a lot more. It's it's a free app that you can get. But my, my six-year-old loves Trump. 
So I, uh, I figured I'd make him like a little encouraging video. And he's, he's digging this. You got, listen to this, listen to this. All right. <laughs> I, so I, he's in a play uh, with his sister. They're doing it in Canyon County and uh, he's, he's actually doing excellent at school. So I sent him a message from the president, uh, you know, not Joe, because uh, that would be confusing. He wouldn't be able to understand that. I sent him a message from President Trump. This is for the young man I keep hearing about. He goes by the name Brooks. Brooksy, wow, I'm so impressed when I hear how good you're doing at school and in the play Finding Nemo. Amazing. I hope they find that Nemo. And with you helping, Brooks, I know they will. This kid, <laughs> he lost his mind. He goes, how did... How does President Trump know I'm in a play? I said, well, I told him. I told him. And uh, he, I was going to tell him it wasn't real. But then he was so proud. I couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to tell the young guy that it wasn't, that it wasn't real. <laughs> so I feel like that's one of those things I'm going to have to wait and, and tell him when he's older. But for now... Uh, he's he's uh, he's really believing. That he's this under the impression that our former president is not only impressed with him in, in his schoolwork, <laughs> but Brooksy. that <laughs> me and my wife, me and my wife kept kept laughing at the last part that I did. She's like, "Why did you add that?" I, was like, I don't know. It just felt very Trump. I hope they find that Nemo, and with you helping, Brooks, I know they will. <laughs> this is for the young man I keep hearing about. He goes by the name Brooks. Right? It's like. With you helping. With you helping. <laughs> with you helping. I know they will. Uh, if you if you want to have some fun with AI, uh, like so many do, I, I use the Parrot AI app. So Yeah, we had a listener introduce you to that, and it's been downhill ever since. It is uphill. I consider it I consider it <laughs> yeah. uphill. Teach his own. Tomato tomato. <laughs> is the glass half full or half yeah, exactly. empty? Exactly. I guess I guess we'll have to wait until Monday to find the answer to that question. Uh, Matt Murphy's going to join us. Oh no, it's not. No, he's no, not. No, what? We Cameron Smith in for Matt Murphy what today. What is he doing? Three. Did he really take the day off to watch golf? No. I don't know if he said what he was doing in the air, so I don't know if. Well, let's just make fun of him for liking golf then. That's it. I mean, I don't have the Masters on in here. No. No, I'm not me. Do you really have it on? <laughs> I have it. I, I'm not watching it right now, but I had it on for, I mean, it's on one of my tabs. If I, yeah, you just keep up. So who's golfing the best golf today? Uh, Homa, Max Homa right now tied with Bryson DeChambeau at seven under. And Scotty Scheffler, who was the far favorite in this match, in this tournament, um, one stroke back, six under. Tiger having a wonky day. I think he's plus two. He's on acid. You think he's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where he's at. Oh, is it, did it get worse? I can't say, I don't know. I haven't found him. But, yeah, weird day. Birdie, bogey, birdie, bogey, bogey, that kind of thing. No idea what that means. Uh, <laughs> people people are asking me what AI app I used. Parrot. Parrot. AI, like a, like the bird. Parrot AI. It's on, the, it's on the app store. The free version is what I use. You get, uh, I think it's like a 300 character limit. 300. So, Parrot AI. <laughs> 94, 95 on the member's nutrition text line said, didn't Murphy just do 9 to 12? <laughs> Fact check that. <laughs> <laughs> it's 11.50 on Super Talk, 99.7 WTN.
Super Talk 99.7 WTN. My name is Chris Han, Mac Mori producing, and Cameron Smith in studio. He's filling in for uh, Murphy today. What's up, Cameron? Hey, buddy. So uh, he was listening on the way in, and he, he heard us telling the story of the Pirates pitcher, Doc oh, Ellis, from the 70s. Yeah. Well, that caller who called in and was like, I didn't do any hard drugs, just cocaine. Just, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but, just the powder. Never in, It's like, okay. All right, all right. That's, <laughs> Sweet, man. Fact check that. Not um, hardcore. Yeah. So, but uh, Cameron comes in here and he tells me, he goes, uh, you know, the Doc Ellis story, he pitched a no-hitter on ass. He's like, well, I have a... I have a story about a Congress guy who voted hammered. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. I, there, there was a congressman. We, it was a judiciary <laughs> committee hearing, and he, the, we, the chairman at the time was Jim Sensenbrenner, and he suspended the hearing, and so everybody thought they were done for the day, right? And that they would come back tomorrow. So they went, kicked off their shoes, chilled out. Yeah. And how, the, how, how much did he have? Well, Poured out about half a Diet Coke, filled the rest with rum, oh. and had a couple of those, right? Within an hour. I mean, that'll, that'll, yeah. enough to get get. Yeah, wild. you feel something, yeah, for sure. And this congressman also had a situation where he had an old dress shirt, and he had a hole in the sleeve, and he just ripped the sleeve oh. off, entirely off. So he has <laughs> one long sleeve, one cutoff sleeve. Throws and then they called. He looked like, look like Ric Flair after a scrum. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then they called and said, "We're going to resume the hearing." Throws the jacket back on yep, and it gets there. And you know what's really tragic is you can't tell the difference between a congressman <laughs> that oh had gosh. a lot to drink and the ones who haven't <laughs> because is, it's that dumb. That is hilarious. <laughs> that is so true too. Yeah, that happens all the time. I mean, I've never working on Capitol Hill was a master class in alcohol abuse of <laughs> how oh wait it's the morning and you're you're drinking i mean the culture of alcohol in dc is just bonkers really oh yeah just like uh everybody's like a vodka skeleton like nancy pelosi uh the word i would use is high functioning alcoholics okay that, that you've got a lot of people who drink a ton you would never like it doesn't really impair their performance like they're able to go they well, figured it them, out most of them don't perform well it's not exactly a high you know a, a job that demands a lot of detail you yeah. just get up there and you roll with your feelings and really when you think about it your friends at the bar how they sound like america eagles yeah well same yeah so yeah, yeah. That, that checks out what do you got coming up on the show today cameron so the tax man cometh all right it, for, we see it coming monday we need to talk about it friday i got some tax foundation statistics to go over it's going to blow your mind um we're going to talk about some legislation moving in in the legislature fisa trump on abortion all that fun stuff I, i'm i'm looking forward to it are you pro committing tax fraud or anti committing tax fraud well i'm finding ways to deduct my mulch so <laughs> all right we'll put this it that is way. exciting find out how to deduct your mulch cameron smith <laughs> is on his way in here next where can people find you on social media you can find me at d cameron smith on x okay uh you can find me as well chris hand on air on twitter true social instagram hope you guys have the best weekend you're able to unplug enjoy time with your families and have fun that's what the democrats don't want you to do they don't want you to have fun so uh stick it to the democrats have a great weekend it's Super Talk 99.7 WTN.